Welcome to our new webinar. I'm Isidro Flores, uh, Deputy Sales Director for Yaltes AGB, and today I'm going to talk about spool bulbs. If you have any questions uh, during the webinar, you can ask them and they will be answered. Uh, a spool bulb, as you can see here, uh, an, an example of it, and can be found in almost every industry you can imagine, performing a wide range of tasks. But what is a spool bulb and how does it work? A spool bulbs can be used in both hydraulics, where the, the oil is the energy source, like what we are going to see in tractors, or pneumatics, where the air is the energy source. And their job is to control the flow direction of the energy source by combining or switching the path through which the oil or air can travel. So we can see here an example of it, how it is moving. So you see how the oil, um, the pressure changes. So then we can also see it in retraction. We can click on play and then we can see how it's going to be moving the whole process. And then here we see how it moves um, backwards. So the function of the spool valve is to move within the sealed case and provide the function of either blocking or opening these ports depending on the position of the spool. What are the spool valve actuators? The spools can be moved in many different ways. Manually using a button or a lever, like we will be seeing in different tractors. And also as part of a larger control system using a solenoid actuator that we will be also seeing in other tractors. Whatever the method is chosen to control the valve, uh, all that we are doing is simply pushing the spool to move within the housing. And by doing this, we are allowing or blocking the path between the ports. In some cases, there may be a solenoid at each end of the ball, whereas in other, in other cases, there is a spring return. So uh, when the solenoid is no longer pushing the actuator, the spring will return the spool to its normal or rest position, like we call it. Spool balls come in a wide variety of different types and configurations, uh, some having more ports and able to control multiple items of equipment at once. To sum up, Spool bulbs are a common way of controlling hydraulic and pneumatic components by allowing, restricting, or blocking the flow of the energy source by way of a simple spool mounted within an outer casing. So we saw here an example. We will see, for example, the F position that you see how the whole system will be moving with the different pressure. And in this case, uh, you can see that it's moving uh, freely. Now that we have seen an example of it, uh, we will move on to the software. And I would like to talk now that the spool bolts with electronic control units have different advantages. And these is, are the ones that we need a diagnostic tool in order to diagnose it. The two main manufacturers are Rex Roth, uh, for it is part of the Bosch group and Sauer Danfoss. The other less one, uh, the other one that is less common, it's called uh, Husho. The advantages of the electronic control unit are first, you can control the position and control the tension of the valve. Second, you can control the pressure of the spool valve system. Third, the vibrations are damped during the transport in the different actuators connected to the valve. And fourth, it can be diagnosed by the master control system. And this is why JAL test is so important. We need a diagnostic tool to diagnose those electronic control units. We will see today the main makes that have 
uh, electronic control of spool bolts, John Deere case and so on, and we can use JALTES uh, to diagnose them. We will be able to perform different actions that we will see in a couple of minutes. Before that, uh, I want you to know that if we come here, for example, to uh, this fence, and then we go to the hydraulic systems, we see here the Volvs Sauer Danf uh, Danfoss, we will connect to it, and then here we go, we go to parameters, spool valve identification code, and here we see how it will work. But what I want to show you is that the spool balls are usually uh, located, for you to know, uh, on the back side of the tractor next to the hydraulic system. But we can also find spool balls in the front side of the tractor. In this way, we will give uh, the hydraulic power to the front implements. The spool balls can also be found uh, on the side. So there are different places where we can find the spool balls. Now I would like uh, to explain that the main problems that spool balls can experience are two. The first one, the valve does not change the position because there is an issue with the valve piston. The spool valves cannot be positioned as we command it. That's the problem that we have. Then the second main problem is the controller is broken. Usually, this is due to a high level temperature that affects the components of the electronic part of the spool valve. Now, it's time to see what we can do with gel test in order to um, repair, to check, or monitor anything that we want related to the spool valves. First, we will start, as I said, with John Deere. We will go to the 6R series, for example. We will connect to it. And then we will go directly to the hydraulic systems. We have two possibilities uh, for the spool balls, the control panel for the spool balls, the SCC, and the SEO remote hydraulic controller. Depending on the tractor, we will have one or the other. Let's check the control panel for spool balls, the SCC. Then here we will click on connect as usual. And here you, we can see that we can read full codes. We will read all the full codes that are present in the system. As usual, if it is active, the OEM full code, how many times it happened, and then a brief description of the full code. We click on the I, we will get freeze frame data about when that full code happened. Then we have help and components of the full code. We have here that it's related to all the spool bulbs. We click on see information about the first the spool bulb one. It will tell us where it is located in the system and also operational values like the pin out and the voltage. We want to see it in the wiring diagram. No worries, we will be also able to check it. So we go to the specific model that we have, for example, with an arm armrest. And then here we will see where it is located. And if we click in the middle, we see it's in the X3, and we see the specific pins, and we found it in less than a couple of minutes where it is located in the electronic control unit. But we have much more. We have the full call troubleshooting. So we will give you the troubleshooting on how to repair that specific full code. So you just need to follow the steps and then you will be able to do it. So if we go back, uh, we click on accept. And once when we solve our full code, we can clear them as usual. In system data, we will see information of the electronic control unit. Of course, we are in a demo. That's why we don't have any specific information. We have also calibration data. So we will be uh, seeing information about the extension and retraction of every specific spool valve. Then if we go back, we can monitor live data. And here we can add triggers when there is more or less equal or different to a specific amount. So the program will let us know. We can 
check all of them, 27 different measurements, and then we can see it in an interactive view. As you can see, um, it will tell us the state of every specific uh, spool valve, if it's non-activated, if it's in an extension or retraction, or if we don't know it, right? Then this is very useful, but more important parameters. We can display the parameters uh, just as they are right now, knowing which spool balls are present and which type of spool ball we have. This is important for John Deere because we can have two different ones and there is even a specific action that uh, helps us when we change, for example, a spool ball that we have in, of a specific type for another one, we are able to do it with our software. So uh, our software will help us when replacing a specific spool valve type. This action will be the configuration of the spool valve types. So we come here. Uh, as I said, in John Deere, we have the possibility of configuration of the spool valve types. There are two different ones. Here you have the type 300, 350 and here the type 450, and you have the reference also of John Deere here available. Imagine that you used to have this one in your tractor and then you are gonna replace it for this one. No worries, we click on accept. Then just following the steps of the program, we will be able to do it. Imagine that the one that we changed was Spool Wolf 3. We click on it and then we will let the program know that now we have a 450 and not a 300, 350 anymore. We click on check. And then the parameter setting process has finished. You see how easy it is, but it is needed. And without that diagnostic tool, we are not able to do it. So here we go. We click on accept and then we have finished the process. Then. It's important here that we see another action. This is the number of spool balls installed. In this specific John Deere, we can have up to four and we go to spool ball one, we click on accept. We need to follow the steps and we can tell the program, uh, the electronic control unit in the tractor if it's not present or present. This is important. We click on present, then we click on next and then we will be able uh, to have changed it. And that's it, very easy, of course, but it is needed so we have a proper uh, use of our tractor. Very important, a spool valve identification code. This is uh, one that we will see not only in John Deere, but in many different makes. We can modify a spool valve identification value with this uh, parameter changing we need to perform this action when a previously installed spool valve in the vehicle is going to be replaced with a new spool valve or in case it might be needed a change in the identification values of the spool valves installed in the vehicle for example if we want to control two spool valves with one fingertip instead of just controlling one with one one spool valve with one uh, fingertip Besides, as we can see in the help, it is recommended to perform a calibration after this process if the manufacturer has it available, of course. Let's see how the process works. We click on accept. We need to follow, of course, always and to fulfill the initial conditions. We click on next. Then the current value of the connected spool ball is shown below. We select the spool valve one, for example, and then we will do the test. And the process has finished. That's it, we have done it. Then the other action that I wanna show you today is extension retract switch of the spool balls of the, on the man guard. There are some tractor models in which we can find buttons on the backside, I'm sure that you have seen it, that are made to control Power takeoff, hydraulics, or spool valves. With this action, we will decide if we want to have these buttons activated and therefore uh, control our spool valves with these buttons. 
we will tell yes we have that button available and click on accept and then that's it the process has finished you see how easy it is to perform these actions but how much we need them so that's why the importance of having this diagnostic tool so we are able to do it then we go back i want to show you the last part now that we have seen all the different actions we will move to the one of the most important ones right calibration we go to spool valve calibrations and we will find the process to calibrate the positions of the stepper motors that control the spool valves the fingertips right that we usually know uh, that they are known by fingertips but this is like a model that used to have stepper motors and that's why we are going to see it because we uh, are able also to calibrate it here we see the configuration data right now we need to follow always the initial conditions and once when we meet them we click on next and then we are processing it we will click on spool valve one and then we need to follow the stage one for extension stage two for extension then a stage one for retraction and a stage two for retraction here we go we are in the last part of the process and here you go calibration has been completed and now we have the new values now if we go back we will disconnect and i just want to let you know that while in the newer system in the sco remote hydraulic controller there is no need to calibrate the stepper motors at this system does not have it and it is made automatically so in terms of maintenance it's also very important we can see it here and then we will go to general uh, it's important to kind of maintenance it it is important to replace the the oil filter periodically when it is needed but also to check the oil level of the hydraulic system because it affects the spool valve systems because they are interconnected then uh now that we have seen every action and information in john deere let's go to check case the other main make in the market of course we will go to magnum series here we go and then let's go to 310 we connect to it then we will click on hydraulic systems again and then in this case the name is rehr remote hydraulic controller we will click on connect and you can see we can read clear fault codes check system data monitor live data like we did in john deere and parameters in this case we have the calibration data inside of parameters so here we go we will check it we can display the parameters then we can modify parameters and we see the number of installed uh, spool balls we are able to do it by clicking on here and we need to follow the initial conditions and here it's important to know that for this specific model the minimum uh, um, amount of spool balls that must be um, located are four so that's why we don't see one two three we need to select one of these three possibilities imagine that we have six uh, spool balls now installed we click on that and then as you can see the parameter setting process has finished so we have just finished it and then we can cancel it and get back to our main menu we have the spool ball identification code as we saw in john deere we can modify spool ball identification value we need we need to perform this action when a previously installed spool valve in the vehicle is going to be replaced with a new spool valve or in case it might be needed a change in the identification values of the spool valves installed in the vehicle for example if we want to control uh, three spool valves with one fingertip instead of just controlling one spool valve 
Besides, it is recommended to perform a calibration of this, this process and as always, if the manufacturer has it available. Then in this case, it's not like John Deere, it is a manual process. So we just need to follow the technical release. Once when we have done everything, we need to make sure that the device is connected to the vehicle and we will continue with the process. And then here we go, we have finished it, uh, this pool ball identification code. Then we also have the front loader um, action that this is uh, a way to let the system know that we have a front loader available. So we come here, we need to meet the initial conditions, and then we just let the electric control unit know through gel test if it is installed. We click on yes, installed, and then it's already done. So we click on next, and then that's the next step and the last one. So we let the program know, the electric control unit know that we have front loader uh, installed. Then the last one, calibration. This is the other action that I would like to show you, the calibration of the spool valves levels. So here, this calibration consists on uh, saving the voltage values for the different potentiometer positions in the control unit. So the system must be calibrated when the control unit or any other component belonging to the system has been replaced. So we click on next. And here we have, like before, a technical release because it is done manually. We just need to follow the step and then at the end, make sure that the device is connected to the vehicle. And here we go. We have already calibrated the spool valves levels. So we go back. I want to show you as well the other main make in the market, New Holland, of course. Uh, I will show you the T8 series, the CVT. So as you can see, we need to select the hydraulic systems and it is the same name as the case one, REHR, Remote Hydraulic Controller. So we click on connect. And here we go. We have read, clear, full code, system data, monitor, parameters. We see the same parameters that we can uh, modify in case. So we have the same actions and also calibration like we saw in case Y, because both belonged to the CNH group. So it will be exactly the same that we saw uh, in case. Now, I wanna show you uh, what we have available also for Kubota uh, make that is more and more important in the North American market. We go to the M7 series, um, typical tractor. And in this case, uh, we need to connect using the arm rest control. So we click on connect. And here it is where we can click on modify parameters and mark if the specific control lever is present or not. So we go to parameters, modify parameters. And here we will find the spool balls related. It is loading, here you go. We can tell if the control lever is uh, it's active for the spool ball five or for the six. Click on present and then next. And we have finished the process. Then we can also calibrate it, the control levels of the spool bulbs. We select the specific spool bulb that we want to calibrate. Uh, you can see here the levels of each one of them, the one, two, th three, four, five, six. We click on next. And this system must be calibrated when the control unit or any other component that belongs to his system, to this system has been replaced, okay? Then once the test has started, we cannot cancel it, okay? We click on accept. 
And here we go with the calibration of the levels. Of, uh, we will go to the, all the different positions. We just need to follow the steps here and then we click on continue with the process all the time. Floating position. So just following the whole uh, process, we will have been able to calibrate the control levels. Then uh, this is what I wanted to show you about Kubota. And let's move on to the other main make in the market. Of course, Massive Ferguson. We are going to see the 7400 series. In this case, we need to go to hydraulic systems and then Rexroth valves and then click on connect. Uh, here we have system checks, something that we haven't seen before, but we also have here system data, general data, technical data, manufacturer data, and software version. System checks, that's what I want to show you. We click on our valve's temperature check-in. We can see if the internal temperature of the valve is the right one when the oil of the hydraulic system is flowing. So this is very useful. We select the first one, and then here we go. We have checked the temperature already. Then uh, we will see the Wolf, uh, Wolf, sorry, uh, operation check. This is so we can check that the operation of the internal valves of the spool valves is correct. An automatic process is performed. This process has different stages during which the electrical and mechanical connections as well as the system components are checked. So we click on the specific ball that we want to uh, check. We will click on a start and then the system without oil pressure check will be performed. Here we go. And the results of the system without oil pressure check is shown next. Here, so here we see everything related to that one. And now with oil pressure, so we can see the different values. This is very useful. And of course, we need it. We are able to do it with our tool. So now I want to show you configuration. And uh, of course, in parameters, we can also see the spool valve identification code. It is exactly the same that we have done with other makes, such as John Deere case, so I will not show it again. Then I want to show you configuration because this is something different uh, in Massive Ferguson. This is the number of spool valves installed. We have seen before that we needed to tell uh, the electronic control unit um, if the spool valve was connected or not in John Deere case. For Massive Ferguson, we need to connect the uh, spool balls, and then we don't need to tell the electronic control unit if they are connected or not. It is automatic. We will click on this action, and then it will detect it automatically. And this will be everything about uh, Massive Ferguson. Um, as we have seen, the main functions that we need for the different spool valve systems is the same no matter in which make we are working on. Each tractor has a high number of spool valves that have electronic control. That's why it's so important to know how to repair the different issues and how to do it with a diagnostic tool like Jaltest. That we can face, uh, you know, that we can face up different uh, issues in our daily work with the spool valves. We have chosen the main uh, makes of the North American market, but this technology can be found in every make of the market. Of course, gel test is your diagnostic tool if you need to diagnose any other make that we have not seen in this webinar. Thank you very much for your time. We will allow you to ask any questions you may have for another couple of minutes. Thank you very much.